When James Brown got out of prison, Ham was deaf when he got to, when he walked at the gates with a limousine. No family, no friends was deaf. These are stories you don't know about. He says that I influenced him. Oh, God has. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gonna talk. So that day was on the set, two days to quit, shooting some stuff. And my phone, uh, I got a phone call from, well, the people came out and gave me a letter. Said, my, your mom said call as soon as possible. And I thought something was wrong. So I ran in, I, I took the phone call, called my mom back, she said, baby, I lost my job today. My mom was crying. I said, mama, don't cry, it's gonna be all right. So I said, what, what happened? She said, I'm just, we're just gonna be missing money, baby. You know, me and your sisters, man, it was just my mom, she had divorced my stepdad, so it was just her and my two sisters. So here I'm taking care of everybody. I said, mama, don't worry about it, I got you. I send you $600, $800 a month, whatever. I said, how much money you gonna lose, mama? She said, about $600. I said, okay, I, t I take care of that. You had it, and had some. I got it. So I came back out, and Hammond said, man, what's wrong, man, what's wrong with you? I said, I told him, my mama, he said, man, no, 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 Miss, 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 Miss Luann, no, hold on, hold on a minute. Hammond got right on the phone. He called our accountant at our bank. I named him Lynn Hamilton in Fremont, California. He said, Mr. Lynn, check this out. He said, uh, I want you to send uh, Benito Mama a thousand dollars a month. And she said, "Okay, you want me to take it out of the business account?" He said, "No, no, no, no. Take it out my take it out my personal account." He said, "Henry, you sure you want to take my?" He said, "Look, you heard what I said, lady. Send him, send him my, send my. Matter of fact, call this mama, get her account number, send her a thousand dollars a month. Till I say stop it." She said, "Okay." Call my mama, gave my mama a thousand dollars a month. Two years later, everything was over. I was gone for two years from Hammer. My mama was still getting that money. Until the, until the bankruptcy caught it and cut it off. Mm. She called me and said, baby. I said, what, mama? I said, they cut the money off today. I didn't get it today. I said, well, maybe they finally caught it, mama. Hammer did that for my mama. Wow. Out his personal account. Wow. One from the business, from his personal. Two years. That showed me he, he, that, that brother loved me, man. Mm. He loved you. Yeah, he loved me, bro. When the last time you talked to him? It's been about almost a year. One of our, our, our crew members died. And we called him, uh, his name was uh, Keith. Keith's last name, we call him T-Bag. But uh, he died, he died here, he died across seas. He was over there in, in uh, Japan or somewhere, uh, China. Yeah, he got married and all that. He I thank God there. for you coming out telling all these stories, but what do you think Helma think about you telling just what went on in the inner camp? Because a lot, this story, uh, you hear it from other people that was outside the sector, but I really never heard it, me, myself, mm -hmm. from somebody that was really there and really was dealing with the situation. Mm -hmm. Um, how do you think he feel about you talking about that? The last thing I heard was from the guy I told you we got shot in the leg named Frosty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I talked to him about two weeks ago. He said him and him went to a funeral a couple weeks ago. So a guy they knew from the town. He said, man, he said, man, but you know, all on TV, he telling he tell the secrets, man. He tell the stories, man. How you feel about it? So Hammer said, he said, it's all good, man. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm holler, but he said, man, you tell him, stop telling the story, man. He telling too much. You know what I'm saying? He's going to mess around and say the wrong thing. He said, no, it's all good. He, he good. He good. I mean, don't trip about it. I'm all at him, and I ain't heard from him yet. But it's wow. all good. I imagine I'll be here from soon, though. Yeah, because at the end of the day, I don't think you. I think you're doing what needs to be done. Oh yeah. Because yeah. It, it, a lot of people went through a lot of things, and it's not only it's healing for you too. Yeah. Just a lot of people don't even story. know me though, CEOs. Right. They don't know I'm that guy. No, but still, you know what I'm saying? For you personally, we yeah. deal with a lot of artists that are not in the limelight no more, really like mm -hmm. that. And a lot of them, because of their story and because of their pride and because of the stuff that they went through, a lot of times they get bogged down, I'm telling mm -hmm. you, right? Mm -hmm. And the, just the expression and the way that you're telling the stories and the way that you're expressing it, I think it helps, bro. Yeah. And not only you, other people who've been through that. A lot of other artists been through a lot of stuff that they haven't told, let haven't me, been, bro. Let me say this. Out of everybody that was in that crew with Hammer back in the day, it's on the three are still doing records. I'm probably number one doing the, 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 the on the so bigger scale. So. Mm -hmm. You know, not Southern Soul. I do R&B too. R &B. So mm -hmm. my last record is R&B record. Just wanna love you. Big record sound like some Charlie Wilson. Mm -hmm. Me, Lamar, and a guy one cause one effect. Terrence Davis. He just released a record the other day. Southern Soul down in, in Meridian, Mississippi. He's from Meridian. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Terrence. Yeah, Terrence, Terrence Snow. I mean, Terrence Davis. Terrence Davis, man. So, B. Angie B. ain't doing nothing. I, I think she's trying to do something, but it ain't, ain't nothing really came out. Um, my girl, 357, they ain't doing anything. Harford Ho has been dispensed for years. I mean, nobody else is doing records but us. We're the last three. Wow. The last three of the Hunt Show. And 
I can say this about the industry. I don't think it'll never be a label like that again, that the hammer did what he did for people trying to help everybody. I gotta tell this other story right quick. I know, I know we gotta go. Oh no, we ain't gotta no, go. You, Let's you go. Okay, listen. We came off tour before we went on our last European tour. And uh it was going we was gonna be off for a whole month, right? A, a month break before we went across seas. Hammer was so generous, he said, I can't let my people go back. He said, his brother Louis like, send everybody home. And we can come back, come back to work, we can bring everybody back and save his money. Hammer spent one million dollars on salaries for all 400 of us employees, including the crew members and everybody. He said, make sure everybody gets paid. He said, because if it had been for them, I wouldn't be me. They all work collectively to make me be the star that I am. I don't want that, I don't want them to go home. Put them all in hotels, because we had all get by apartments and all that kind of stuff going to it. He said, put them all in hotels and let them do their thing for the next month. I'm gonna pay them their checks too. So they can still live like they did when we was on the road. Now, we might not give them the per diem money, but we're gonna give them this. And he did that, man. Wow, that's Love huge. It was like a big family. Yeah. Man, wow. do you think there was any other group out in the early 90s like that that no. had that size of, of impact? And everybody that many used to tell him he was stupid. Everybody tell him, man, you crazy, man. How you got all these people out? You paying everybody? Mm hmm. Like, yeah. Hammer believed in, in second chances. We had cats on our crew that was killers. We've been in prison for murder, kids, robberies, you know what I'm saying? We had no pedophiles out there with us, you know, but these cats, he gave them, because society wouldn't give them a chance. And Hammer would go to their POs and tell them, I got them. Put it on me. They get in trouble, I take the penalty for them getting in trouble. But they ain't going to do it because they with me. And it, they would allow them to go on the road and be on tour and make a, a living for their family so they could feed their babies and their family back at home. Which they had, they hadn't. They'd have been. They'd have went back to the streets, start doing the same old stuff over. There, there, there's a scripture to say, "I was in prison, and, and you did not visit mm -hmm. me." So a lot of times, because he's a. When did he? Because when did he take this plunge to say, "I'm in the spirituality. When I'm in the. I'm gonna be a pastor." Because that. Well, Hammer. Point, yeah. Hammer. Was, did you see that in him early on? What people don't understand is, Hammer before he became MC Hammer, the dancing guy, sensational. Hammer was the Holy Ghost boy. Okay. He's a he's a he's a gospel rapper. Mm. He's a preacher at whatever age he was before he got the Navy and married his wife. Stephanie had been with him for like forty years. Wow. Yeah. So he was doing that and he changed from Holy Ghost Boy to doing he made he met this producer by the name of James Early. And they got together and that's where he got that funk from. Pump it up. All them songs, uh they put me in the mix. Uh uh what's the other song? Uh man, so many songs James did. But I mean, I mean, just mean them bass lines, the stickler, do 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 man, pop it, man. I'm gonna chill on something like you can't see it, but boy, that's the only guy I ever seen in my whole entire life. I watched dance, got chill bumps while watching him dance. I said, what the hell is going on right here, man? Hammer moves so smooth, so man, he was like, he danced, it's like effortlessly, his body moved like I don't know, man. He was just cold. Just cold in the game. You, you like, ain't never seen nobody that could out there. Nobody. <laughs> Not even James. He got beside James doing the, 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 the James with his legs sliding across. The, uh -huh. Shit, Hammer did it better than James. Uh -huh. All that jumping up doing. You spins, telling me? No, nah, I around. seen James. Do you say Hammer did it better than James Brown? No, James Brown. Matt I love Mr. James and God bless his soul and peace. Hey, hey, we we did a special with him on HBO. Right there, Mr. James. When, when James Brown got out of prison, Ham was there when he got the, when we walked at the gates with a limousine. No family, no friends was there. These are stories you don't know about. He says that I influenced him. Hammer gave him a briefcase. James opened it up. What's this? This is my appreciating you, Godfather. $100,000. Hammer's the reason why James got all his old publishing rights into his music. Smile on me. He's been when James was locked up and gone, everybody was sampling his shit. And they've been sampling for years and never gave him no money for it. 
Hammer took him over to Capitol. They got James together and got his stuff together, and they collected all his pups and gave, gave his money back to change for us. All the songs, all the rappers that have been using his samples in and paid him for it. Wow. Remember, you t- you're telling me MC Hammer organized it and helped James Brown to understand, you know. What he was losing, the money he was losing, and they was robbing him. He said, since I'm your godson, I'm going to show you, Godfather, how to get your money. I just when he got out of prison. When he, he got, got out of prison. prison, yeah. Yeah, we on Boss Talk TV. Shout out to E-Heat, a reason you see.